today is the big day that I go from 12 hives to 25. So I have 10 nukes sitting over here that I'm gonna put into boxes today. And then I plan to take a couple splits off of my strongest hive at a different location tomorrow. So we're moving on pretty quickly. So I thought what better time than now than to talk about what you should be looking for when you are going through a nuke or when you're going through your hive. How you should be looking at a frame and what you should be looking for so that you can better understand where your, your hive's health is at and know what to do moving forward. So all my new beekeepers out there, this one's for you. <sighs> oh man. <laughs> I just realized I forgot all of my lids and all of my bottom boards. I have all the boxes, but I left the rest at home. Mm. <laughs> they are not happy. So, that being said, we should probably do that. They are actually acting normal. So here is how I apply it. It doesn't matter which side you do. Just make sure you do it in the front. I got it in the back. Lay it across like I did here. Since I've been expanding, I've been trying out different companies for where I'm getting all of my boxes from. Um, I've tried companies like Dadent, um, Better Bee, the, the ones that you could find off of Amazon. I've tried those too. Um, I've tried a bunch of different brands and companies and I have finally found one that I'm gonna stick with because I absolutely love. So I got these boxes from Hillco. They're located in Illinois. They're a smaller company, but these boxes were only 20 bucks a piece. Like, that is a freaking steal. And I know times are getting tough right now, so if I can help you guys save money, I'm gonna try my best. Um, so I'm gonna put a link in the description. I'm gonna put um, their website so that you can go click on it and check them out if you'd like to. But also, I wanna show you these frames. So I've never seen this de design for a frame. It doesn't bulge out. And um, I'll put up a clip, because I have some at home, I just don't have some with me. But there's a groove on the inside of this bottom bar that holds this frame in place so well. Like, it usually, fra like plastic frames, they kind of like shake back and forth, but like, you ain't moving this thing. It's staying put. I am really impressed with this company. Um, just the fact that I'm talking about them says a lot. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to save some money and you want some good quality boxes, go check them out. They're great. And yes, you saw me right. I am trying out the plastic frames again. Um, I got them pre-waxed this time. So yeah, we'll see how they go. These are supposed to be a little better. So the first thing that you want to be observant of is what is the temperament of your bees? So as you, be, as you continue being a beekeeper, you'll notice that your bees will change over the course of the season. And a lot of times that is because of other things that are going on either inside the hive or outside the hive. So generally the bees will be kind of calm, but if you notice they start getting aggressive, there could be something else going on. If the hive is queenless, they'll be aggressive. If the nectar flow is starting to slow, they'll be aggressive. Um, anything, if, even if you have like a pest inside the hive, like ants, or they have a brood disease or something going on, they will be more aggressive. So they will tell you when something is going on. So just take note of that. The next thing you want to take note of is when you open up your hive, you want to notice whether all of the bees are coating the frames and almost like overflowing from the box. This would be a sign of a very strong hive. So that is good. Um, but if not, then they might just be a little bit weaker and that's okay. It's just something good. That's good to keep note of. Um, I like to keep a notebook or type notes in my phone so that I am always aware of how each hive is doing. So then I can later look back and look at all the data and maybe make some connections into why that colony didn't do so well or why it did good. Um, it's just good to keep notes for your own personal records. And honestly, it helps you become a better beekeeper as you learn your bees. So this is one of my nukes that I am putting into a bigger box today. It's looking pretty good. I just smoked them, so some of them kind of went down already and some are already kind of poking up. Um, but this, yeah, these five frames are looking really good. Uh, so I'll give you a look. 
So depending on how big your hive is, you're going to want to go through and just see how many bees are occupying each box. If you have a ton of bees in that very top box, it's likely that it's time that you do need to add room. Um, especially if all the comb is built out and they're already starting to fill it up with honey. Um, but again, this just shows you the strength of your hive. It's good to keep in mind how many boxes are full and how many are not being visited by the bees. Just gives you a good gauge on their health and how they're doing. Next, you're gonna, of course, go into the brood box and take a frame out of your hive. Actually, let's uh, do this first. Okay, so, like I said, take a frame out so you can look at it. Also, a little trick, your hive tool. This little curve there, for me, that is so that you can take it and I'll show you. So that is so you can literally take this hive tool Go up to the frame like this, and look at that, it pulls it out really easy. I'm only saying this because it took me a year to realize that is what this little curve is for. So use it to your advantage. Okay, first thing you wanna notice, see how this entire frame is coated in bees. That is good. You don't want a hive that when you pick up a brood frame has barely any bees on it. Next, you're gonna look over the entire frame. Make sure you don't have a queen on this frame. If you do, I just generally like to put it back in the box to prevent her from flying away. Um, but if you're moving it like me, I just wanna know where she is so I can give special care to that frame to make sure she doesn't accidentally get squished or anything. Okay, so as you're looking through your hive, you wanna keep in mind of what you're seeing on each frame. So on this frame, I am seeing lots of pollen stores and some honey stores. I'm seeing lots of empty cells. Oh, but I see something else. I'll show you real fast. So as I already kind of mentioned, when you're going through your box, you want to keep in mind of how much honey and how much pollen you're seeing that they have. You want to make sure they have enough food stores because like we do, you need food in order to survive. Um, so the next thing though that you want to look for is you want to see if you can find any eggs. And if you do find eggs, you want to see what their placement is in the cell. Now, this is a great example. I already kind of knew that this colony had this. Um, let's see if you can see it on the video or not. Okay, you kind of can. Okay, so do you see that white dot inside that cell? That is an egg. Oh, of course, they're going to cover it up. Go away. Shoo. And there's one next to it as well, and there's one over here. Now see how that egg is on the side of the cell? This is no good. Yeah, there's another one. There's another one up here. Yeah, that is no good. You want to have eggs that are in the very bottom of the cell. They're not going to be able to develop properly like this. And some people might be really concerned and say, oh no, M, you have another laying worker colony. Um, but there is a queen in this colony and I'll show you what she looks like real fast. So number two, you wanna see how many eggs you have in your colony. That will tell you if you have a laying queen. And then three, you wanna see what is the placement of those eggs. That will give you an idea on the health and the vitality of the queen that you do have. Okay, and you can see a little bit better here now. Now see how all of those eggs are on the very side of the cell. Yeah, we don't like that. <laughs> we want them right smack dab in the middle. But we definitely have a queen that's laying because there's only one egg in each cell. 
so it's not laying workers. And then, okay, so the next thing that you want to be checking, you want to make sure, oh look, and there's my queen actually. Okay, we'll, we'll cover that first. You also wanna, if you do end up seeing the queen, you wanna check on how healthy she is. Now it's kind of hard to tell in this video and it's kind of hard to tell until you've been beekeeping for a while, but this queen is very short compared to what she needs to be. I don't know if I can show you a little bit better, but that could be an explanation of why she's laying on the side. Also, it could just be because she's a newer queen, so she just needs to practice her laying skills a little bit better. But, so yeah, you need to make sure your queen looks healthy. You don't have to always look for your queen. Um, just if you do see her, just look at her, see how she's doing, see how her wings look, see how her body looks. But like I said, do not try to look for her in every inspection. You do not need to do that. And then the next thing that you want to check for is you want to make sure that you have some healthy larva in your hive. You want to make sure you have what I like to call milk brood. Um, yeah, they just love it when you blow on them. But Okay, so this is what I call milk brood. That is larva swimming in what kind of looks like a milky substance. And that milky substance is their food, actually. But you want to make sure that this is in your hive um, because, one, it shows that, again, you have eggs and the brood is healthy and it's developing and all the life, sta all the life stages of the bee are happening, which, obviously, you need. But also, that milk brood is one of the things that prevent the workers from developing ovaries. So both the queen mandibular's pheromone, um, the queen releases a pheromone, <laughs> that's what it's called, and the milk brood both release a pheromone and they work together to prevent the bees from developing ovaries. So that is why if you ever have a laying worker colony, you've probably seen some people, they'll throw in open milk brood into that hive. That is because if the queen is not present, the pheromone from that open brood will prevent them from developing ovaries. Now, the next thing that you want to look for is you want to look at the brood. You want to make sure first that you have kept brood in your hive. It's important to have every single stage of the bee because every single bee has a different job. And so as they get older, they graduate to the next job. So if you don't constantly have new bees coming in, you're not gonna have any bees to take care of all the young. That's what the new bees do, nurse bees. And also, these new bees are who make wax. So you need every single stage of bee in your hive in order for it to do well. So always make sure you have capped brood. Next thing you wanna look at, this brood pattern is absolutely terrible. <laughs> Um, so this is what you want to look at now generally a good brood pattern would be all of this would be filled But see how there's all these empty cells Yeah, that's not good. That means that there's something else going on that either one The Queen is not laying well, which is probably most likely the problem with this colony as we saw her the way she lays eggs um, So that's probably what's causing it But also it could be if the brood has some sort of virus or disease and they die during development, the bees will uncap the brood and take them out. And so then that cell will be empty. And the queen has to go back and then refill all of those, those empty cells with eggs. So that will leave a spotty pattern like this because as each one dies and they take it out, it just, yeah, it looks like this. <laughs> um, so yeah, kind of covered two things in one, but that's the next thing to look at. And we have a hatching bee. Oh, come on, little girl. I always call them little guy, and then I remember that they're girls. <laughs> I know I'm probably not the only one who does this. Oh, there's the head. So the next thing you want to be looking for is you want to be looking for signs of diseases in your hive. Now, I'm going to show you what pollen looks like. I'm doing this because I know as a new beekeeper, I've done this mistake. A lot of times we think that what we're seeing as pollen cells, we tend to think that it's chalk brood, but it's not. So that one that I have centered right there, that is pollen. So is that over there, that right there, and uh, I think that one's empty, this is a yellow frame. But don't mistake pollen for chalk brood. I know they could kind of look similar, um, but yeah, as you continue beekeeping, you'll learn to tell the difference.
Now, in terms of brew diseases, I will put up a couple videos to show you some examples, but you want to be looking at your larva and seeing what color it is and what posi position it is in. So is it curled up in, in its cell and is it pearly white? That is what a healthy larva looks like and that's what you want to see. But if you see something else, you likely could have some sort of brood disease. So you always want to be checking your larva to see how it's doing. And actually, it looks like I have a little bit of something to show you. So this is what we like to call a bald brood. They took the capping off of it and just left the bee exposed inside of it. They did this because they're about to take it out and it's because there's something wrong with it. It could have some sort of, it could have varroa, it could have um, any number of diseases, but oftentimes when you see bald brood like this, it's because it's infected with varroa. So, or I think wax moth does the same thing too, but I don't really have bad wax moth in my area. But again, I did get this, this nuke from somebody else, so they could have wax moth. But next thing, so you see these cups. These are queen cups, and this is really good for me to see because this tells me that they're wanting to replace their queen. They know she's not good, so they're trying to get rid of her. Only thing is, is she has to lay her eggs in these freaking cups, so <laughs> yeah, we'll see if she actually does that. Um, cause yeah, I do not see any eggs or larva inside there, but yeah. So to sum that all up, next thing we'll be looking for is what is the color? What is the, um, the position of your brood so you can tell if it's healthy or not. Now this right here tells me that the levels may be high in this colony. Now see how this piece of brood looks like it literally had its head chopped off. So the bees will do this when that baby bee they sense is uh, infected with Varroa. They can smell it in some way, so they'll uncap it. And actually, I talked about this in my last video. Um, there's recent research that says that brood that appears to have their head uh, eaten off like that, actually, ha the majority of them is infested with deformed wing virus, and it's their way of preventing the spread. So it's good that they take out infected brood. Um, in terms of deformed wing virus, I'm not sure how effective it is, but yeah. Now I already see a bee trying to attend to it. <laughs> Interesting. And as you can see, there's another one up here so this tells me that this colony probably has a higher mite load, so I definitely need to do a check soon. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to do an alcohol wash, though, because it is a smaller nuke. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But And this is a full frame of capped honey, both front and back, which is really good. That means they have enough stores. I'm still going to be feeding them because it is late July right now when I'm starting these. So they really need to get built up before winter hits. But the next thing you do want to be looking for is just observe your bees. Look at them, see how their wings are, make note if they're all looking good or if you see any that look deformed in any way. Again, this just helps you keep an eye on what is happening in the colony because deformed wing virus is a pretty nasty virus that they can get from varroa if your varroa mites are high. Also, when you're first starting out and you have a brand new hive, try to make sure you have a little bit of a gap on every side on the hive and make sure that each of these are connected or are very close to each other. I say this because when they build out their comb, it just helps so they don't build it out too far, especially if there's honey on it, because they will actually build out honey cells as far as they possibly can. Brood cells have a certain length that they have to be and they can't be any longer, otherwise it interferes with bee development. So, But with honey cells, they will build it out really far. So just make sure you have everything touching, that way it keeps everything nice and clean for you and it's easier to get all of your frames out of the hive. And one more thing that I forgot to talk about when I was talking about looking at the brood. Also make sure that you're taking note, are you seeing any perforated capping? So when I say that, I mean, is there, are there cappings like the one that I was showing you that was partially open? This will tell you, again, it's just an early sign of telling you, hey, there's something wrong with this brood. They've already started chewing down the wax because they're going to take it out. Um, 
So it's just another symptom that can kind of give you a big picture when you're looking at the health of your hive. So one more thing that I forgot to mention is keep in mind that the less you check on your hive, the better it's going to do. We actually cause a lot of stress to our bees and we kill a lot of bees when we're taking out frames, no matter how careful we are. So once you know that your queen is laying and that you don't really have any diseases or anything going on in your hive, honestly, you could even just check it once a month and they would do absolutely great. I know when you're first starting, you always want to dig in there just to see what's going on so you can learn more and that's okay. But as you keep beekeeping, try to only get in it as little as possible, maybe every other week. If you can stand waiting that long, it will be better for your bees and they'll be a lot more productive because of it. Okay, so I know I mentioned a lot of things pretty quickly all once, so I will put up a whole entire list on the screen so that you can screenshot and you can use this next time you're in your hive so that you know what you need to be looking for, kind of like a checklist in a way, just as little reminders so you don't forget because I know it's really easy to forget things when you're in a hive because there's a lot of things to do. So I hope this video was very helpful for all of my newbies out there. And I hope you go out and have fun with your bees and make the most of it. Remember that uh, being a beekeeper is a learning experience. It's okay to make mistakes. We all do. That's how you learn. So just have fun with it. And yeah, with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.